Hi, I'm Robert Fritz. I'm a composer and a writer, and I'm also a consultant for some very interesting companies. One thing I've learned is that the same principles that we study in the arts, whether creating music or writing books, are just as useful for those of us who work in organizations. And why are these principles the same? They're the same because it's all about creating. Creating is the most effective process for achieving any type of goals. We can use it when we design our buildings, develop new pharmaceutical products, invent new technology, devise new management systems, and build new businesses. But the creative process can be so much more than just a way of achieving our goals. It can be a way of life because even our lives can be the subject matter of the creative process. Our professional lives. Our lives as parents and family members. Our lives as members of the community. And our personal lives as human beings. Over 20 years ago, I was teaching composition to music students here at the New England Conservatory of Music in Boston. And I began to wonder if the same principles composers use to write music could be used by everyone in creating their goals in life. I developed a course where people came and learned how to use the creative process toward all kinds of goals, career, relationships, projects, family. The first thing I learned was that almost everyone who tried out this approach was able to successfully create their goals. But as time went on, we found two distinct patterns that people seemed to have. One pattern was that each success a person had created became a building block for further success. These people were experiencing growing momentum, and what we might call the soul of the creative process was becoming a regular part of their lives. But there was another pattern. In this pattern, people would create many of the goals they wanted, but later there'd be a reversal, which took them away from their goals. The pattern was to set out for a goal, do what it took to create it, have it for a period of time, but then later, lose the result. The successful product development that didn't go anywhere, the wonderful relationship that didn't last, the business success that eventually turned into a financial loss. How come some people were able to build the creative process into their lives and some people seemed not to? This was quite a mystery. Well, over the years, we found the answer to this question. We discovered the principle of the path of least resistance. The path of least resistance. What is that principle and how does it impact our personal and organizational lives? What we were about to discover came in the form of three profound insights. And the first one is this. Energy moves along the path of least resistance. Water flows where it's easiest for it to flow. When we study nature, we find the principle of the path of least resistance everywhere. Wherever we look, energy is always moving where it's easiest for it to go. That's all it can do. And that's just as true for us in our own lives. The way it's going to be for us will be determined by where the path leads. Will it lead us to success? Will it lead us in directions we don't want to go? And here's the second insight. The underlying structure of anything will determine the path of least resistance. It's the riverbed that causes the water in the stream to flow the way it does. The riverbed is an underlying structure. Our lives and our organizations have their own riverbeds, their own underlying structures. How we got to where we are today is by following the path of least resistance. Our future direction will also follow the path of least resistance. The first insight is that energy moves along the path of least resistance. The second is that the underlying structure determines the path of least resistance. And the third insight is that we can change the underlying structures we're in. If we find ourselves in structures that don't support us in creating the results we want, we can change the structure and thereby change the path of least resistance. This third insight is key to change. It tells us why some change efforts fail time and again and why some succeed brilliantly. All of us have experienced both oscillation and advancement in our lives and in our organizations. When I rock forward, the underlying structure of this rocking chair gets to a certain point where it's easier for it to move backwards. And now it's easier for it to move forwards because that's the path of least resistance. That's where energy finds it easiest for it to go. The underlying structure of this rocking chair is producing an oscillating pattern of behavior. Let's take a look at how oscillating structures impact our lives and our organizations. 
Desire for change leads to change effort, leads to desire for continuity, leads to avoid change, leads to desire for change, leads to change effort. desire for continuity, avoid change, change effort. Manager's desire to control outcomes leads to manager makes all major decisions. Leads to desire to include people close to the situation. Leads to major decisions made by more people. Leads to manager's desire to control outcomes. Leads to manager makes all Major desire to include major decisions to the situation made by more people. Managers desire to control the outcomes. Desire to act leads to decide. Leads to potential risk leads to avoid deciding, leads to desire to act, leads to decide, leads to potential risk, avoid potential risk. Decide. decide, avoid deciding. Desire for change, growth, expanded Long -term capacity, goals leads to change effort, hire new people, add new Invest. technology, centralize decisions, long-term focus, leads to instability, continuity, capacity restraints, short-term demands, lower profits, higher expenses, leads to resist change, restore old practices, limit growth, cut costs, centralize decisions, short-term focus, Leads to desire for change, long term goals, growth, expanded capacity, long term focus, invest, people, change continuity, efforts. short term demands, add new expenses. technology, decentralized. Decisions. Leads to isolation is great in a rocking chair, but not so good when we're trying to create results we want. Let's say we wanted to drive downtown and we happen to find ourselves in a rocking chair. As much as we try, and no matter how much determination and willpower we use, we're not going to go very far. We're in the wrong structure, but we don't have to fix the rocking chair. There really isn't anything wrong with the structure. We happen to not be in the right structure for lasting accomplishment. So rather than trying to fix the rocking chair, we can simply move to another structure, an advancing structure, one that has the ability to lead us to lasting outcomes. So what is this advancing structure that is capable of forming the path of least resistance that will lead us to the results we want? It's called structural tension. The men of this Ugandan village are farming fish from a pond the women built. Before, the people experienced seasonal starvation because food was hard to get. But villagers used the principle of structural tension, and now they have an abundance of food throughout the year. And this is Dr. Peter Boggs, a world-renowned expert on asthma. Dr. Boggs developed a methodology to improve the health prospect of his patients by incorporating structural tension into his treatment process. The results have been simply outstanding. And structural tension is the same force that many companies now use to create the success they desire. For example, American Woodmark, a company that makes kitchen cabinets for retail distributors such as Lowe's and Home Depot, has moved from a $35 million company to one whose annual revenues exceed $400 million using structural tension as an essential part of their management process. 
and structural tension is the same force that enabled the Hubert Elementary School, located in Detroit, Michigan, to see their students' test scores go from a lowly 42% in reading and 38% in math to 78% in reading and 92% in math in only one short year. When Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was a little boy, his father had a lot of trouble getting him out of bed in the morning. So his father would go to the piano and he'd play. And little Wolfgang jumped out of bed, ran down to the piano, and played. If I stretch this rubber band, the tension wants to relax or resolve. Tension seeks resolution. Whenever we have a tension, it will strive for resolution. And by tension, we're not talking about stress, pressure, or anxiety. We're talking about structure. In fact, the structure of the creative process is called structural tension. And structural tension is a dynamic. Once you've established your vision and you've defined your current reality, you have a little engine that helps you. But let's take a look at what happens when you have a vision, but you aren't aware of your current reality. No tension. No dynamic. Nothing. Here's what happens when we understand reality, but we don't have a vision. Nothing. So when establishing structural tension, we need both a vision and current reality. And this structure becomes our riverbed. Now energy can flow from our starting point of current reality to our ending point of the successful accomplishment of our goal. The path of least resistance can lead us to oscillating or advancing patterns. To create an advancing pattern in which the path of least resistance can lead to success, we need to create structural tension. So here are the steps to take. First, be clear about the end result you want to create. Then make sure you understand the current situation you have in relationship to your goals. Once you've done this, you've established structural tension. You can now translate that energy into the action steps that will enable you to create the successful accomplishment of your goals. And finally, let each goal you create build momentum toward the next number of goals as you form a path of least resistance that advances and builds over time. When you move from structural oscillation to structural advancement, your choices have more impact than the circumstances in which you find yourself. Then you are able to become the predominant creative force in your own life. When historian Theodore White was asked what he thought the most powerful force in history was, you know what he said? He said the idea. The idea that is currently in the air, the insight that is ripe. The principle that is the most powerful catalyst for our age is that each individual can become the predominant creative force in his or her own life. Once you discover this principle for yourself, there's no turning back. Your life will be changed forever. Thank <laughs> you.